First Republic Bank has officially collapsed and it was announced today at 3.22 a.m. that J.P. Morgan Chase Bank will be buying most of the assets from First Republic Bank. Now, this isn't the first time that J.P. Morgan Chase Bank has been doing private, essentially bailouts of failing banks. Back when the 2008 crash happened, J.P. Morgan Chase Bank was asked to bail out and purchase Bear Stearns when Bear Stearns collapsed and they also bought out Washington Mutual when they failed. Why is JP Morgan buying out these collapsing banks? Well, for number one, they can buy the assets for pennies on the dollar because there's no other option. And number two, there's a lot of pressure on private banks when you have these types of bank failures because the Federal Reserve Bank and the government and the Treasury Department and the FDIC do not want to see more bank failures because one, they become very costly to the government because the FDIC then has to then go out and bail out all the depositors in addition to like right now the government has bailed out and guaranteed 100 percent of deposits and second when you see a actual bank collapse with no private takeover that creates more panic more fear and more contagion that's why there was a lot of pressure over the weekend for jp morgan chase bank or pnc to buy out the assets from first republic bank and now the question is, what's coming next and what does this mean and why does this happen? Because the reason why it happened, just like Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank, has to do with interest rates. Over the last 12 to 18 months, we've been seeing interest rates skyrocket. When you have these higher interest rates, it causes the value of certain assets, in this instance, loans and bonds, to go down. So now First Republic Bank is sitting underwater on all these assets, on all these bonds, because interest rates have gone up. And then people start pulling their money out of First Republic Bank. So that's a one-two punch. Because now First Republic Bank makes money on your savings. When you save your money at a bank, they then take that savings and they lend it out so they can generate interest. And on the other hand, they also own these assets, which they could sell or liquidate if they need money. Well, what happened was interest rates went up, the assets go down in value. So now First Republic Bank is sitting underwater on their assets, so they can't sell their assets to raise money. The second problem then is people see that First Republic Bank is sitting underwater on their assets, so they want to pull their money out and go to a safer bank. And when they pull their money out, now First Republic Bank is sitting underwater on their assets and they no longer have the ability to make more money because they can't make more loans because they have lost a lot of money. That was where the Federal Reserve Bank created new programs which allowed banks to borrow billions of dollars. And that happened after the, the Silicon Valley Bank collapse. And that's what First Republic Bank did. But then, just last week, First Republic Bank announced their recent earnings. And in that report, they disclosed that $100 billion worth of deposits were pulled out of First Republic Bank after the Silicon Valley Bank failure. Why did people pull their money out of First Republic Bank? Because they were worried about the health of First Republic Bank and they wanted to keep their money safe. And so when they did that, they pulled $100 billion out of First Republic Bank, which meant First Republic Bank was sitting underwater and they had no way to make more money. Then investors saw this last week and they started selling off the stock very quickly. We saw the stock of First Republic Bank crash very hard last week. We saw the stock fall by 50% in one day, then 30% the next day. So the stock fell very hard very fast, and that made it even more difficult now for First Republic Bank to go out and try to raise any money. Then by Friday night, it became very clear that First Republic Bank is not going to survive. And the question was, was it going to be taken over by the FDIC, or was a private bank like Chase Bank gonna come in and buy out the assets? And that was where over the weekend, you saw bids between PNC, JP Morgan, Chase Bank, trying to see what they would purchase and where they could come in and buy out whatever assets they could from First Republic Bank. Now, we just created a whole deep dive of this on Market Briefs, my free financial newsletter. And the reason why you might want to consider subscribing now is because, again, we just created a new banking section because when the Silicon Valley Bank failure really happened, there was a lot of craziness in the banking sector. Well, we just brought back the banking section. So every day we're gonna be keeping you posted on what's going on in the economy, but also the banking sector. That way you can stay up to date and be aware of what's happening, when it's happening, and it's completely free. It's a free newsletter. You can read it less than five minutes every morning, which is why if you haven't joined Market Briefs yet, I highly recommend you do so. And you can join by clicking the link down in the description below. Now the question is, what's coming next? And is this the last one? And earlier today, 
we saw the former chief operating officer at Goldman Sachs, Gary Cohn, go out and talk about this. And what he said is, quote, this is not the end for bank failures. He went on to say that, quote, I don't think we're going to get three bank failures and be done. Crises don't sort of end this easily. There will be other issues out there in the banking world. Why are we going to see more issues? Well, let me tell you what he said. He said that, quote, the unintended consequences of that on banks and balance sheets is very substantial. We will see something in the commercial real estate market, but that's what we're talking about. When you see interest rates rise so significantly, it causes asset values to come down. So he says that we're going to see more bank issues. Why? Because of how fast we jacked up interest rates. But then he goes on to say it's not going to end with banks. He specifically talked about the consequences in banks and balance sheets, but also commercial real estate. And so he has a pretty bleak view that we're going to see more pain in the banking sector, more pain in balance sheets, and then also more pain in the real estate sector, which is to come. And the reason why this is so significant right now is because this week, the Federal Reserve Bank is meeting and they're going to discuss what they want to do with interest rates. And the reason why that matters and is kind of significant is because last time the Fed met, it was right after the Silicon Valley bank failure happened. Kind of interesting. You see a bank failure, and then right after we have this Fed meeting. Same thing happening now. So now we just saw another bank failure, and now the Federal Reserve Bank is going to be meeting again. The consensus is that the Federal Reserve Bank is going to raise interest rates by another 0.25%. But let's put this in perspective. The Federal Reserve Bank has been raising interest rates for over a year now. These higher interest rates have contributed to bringing inflation down slightly, but it's also caused some pain in the economy. We have now seen three major banks fail. Silicon Valley Bank, Signature Bank, and now First Republic Bank fail, primarily due to the higher interest rates. In addition to that, we're now officially seeing our economy slow down. Last week, we got the last GDP data, our economic data. And it said that our economy grew by 1.1%. And what that means is our economy grew a lot slower than expected. It was expected that our economy was going to grow by right around 2%. But the data said that it grew by right around 1.1%. So we're seeing the economy slow down faster than anticipated. The Federal Reserve Bank's last meeting minutes said that they believe that our economy is going to enter a recession by the end of this year. This is the Federal Reserve Bank talking. Now, the Federal Reserve Bank is going to have to make even more crucial decisions on what they want to do with interest rates. And every month, this decision becomes more and more crucial because on one hand, inflation is still significantly hotter than expected. Inflation has come down off its highs, but it is nowhere near gone. It is still hurting people. That means the price of things are not rising as fast as they were maybe six months ago, but they're still rising way too fast. Then on the flip side, the higher interest rates make spending money more difficult. It makes the economic growth more difficult because, well, if you want to buy a half a million dollar home, it's much more difficult to do that when you have to get a 7% mortgage versus when it was a 4% mortgage a year ago. So the higher interest rates have consequences on the economy. We're seeing it in the banking sector. We have people saying it's going to affect the commercial real estate market. And then we have the slowing economy. We're seeing more layoffs. We have been seeing layoffs after layoffs after layoffs in tech companies and non-tech companies now where more and more companies are having to downsize. They want to be more productive. They need to be more efficient and they need to get more lean, meaning they need less workers, which is going to contribute to an even further slower economy. And this is where it's going to be very difficult for the Federal Reserve Bank now to start stimulating the economy because you can't stimulate the economy at a time where inflation is so high. Well, I guess you could technically stimulate, but that's going to make the inflation problem worse. And this is where now the Fed is really starting to get in between that rock and the hard place. This is what I've been talking about for the last 18 months, that inflation is not going to go very, very easily. And in order to bring inflation down, you're going to have to cause economic pain. Now, the question is, what is the Fed going to do? Up until just a few months ago, the Federal Reserve Bank said again and again and again that it doesn't matter what's going on with the economy. It doesn't matter what's going on in the world. The only thing that matters is inflation. And because inflation is high, the Fed has to stay aggressive. That's what the Fed said. But now they started to change their tone. And now they're saying, well, they need to look at things like the banking sector. They need to look at the unemployment levels. They need to look at the economy. And they need to look at kind of where inflation is going to go in the future. So the Fed has a very important meeting this week. And higher interest rates are going to be around for a while. And that is going to cause more pain to the economy. And this is where you want to be financially prepared and you want to be understanding that 
this economic pain isn't going to go away very easily. It's not going to go away very quickly. We're going to see more pain in the banking sector, and this will cause more pain in different sectors of the economy. So you want to be financially prepared. 2023 is not the year for you to go out and finance a new truck. This is the year for you to be financially prepared, meaning build some cushion. That way you can protect yourself, but also capitalize on opportunities that might come your way because the reality is, well, economic pain creates the most opportunities and you can only capitalize on these opportunities if you're prepared and you're educated enough in order to do so. And market briefs will keep you up to date. That way you can stay up to date on what's happening when it's happening.